We're here. Hey. Here we are. <laughs> How's it going? Right. It's going good. How's it going with you? Pretty good. This is so wild. All right. Uh, I know you've been doing a lot of this kind of things for the past couple of days. So thank you so much for coming in in my humble abode to talk about probably one of the most interesting race in years. We're in your humble abode. We're just in a different room than you. I was going to actually come to your abode and tell you that it is really, it is a really humble one. All right. So uh, before we start, um, I'll probably just do a little introduction because I will be uploading this on YouTube as well. So, uh, hey guys, I am joined here by two people who clearly don't need introduction. And yeah, we have here the Oscar expert, two of the pioneers in Oscar predictions on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, you guys made Oscar predictions a lot of fun, and it's great to finally have you here with me and talk about the Oscars. This is just a standard question, and I usually ask this uh, uh, for all of my guests here in IG Live. So just to break the ice, I want to know what is the first childhood movie you remember loving when you were a kid? Did you guys love the same stuff, or is it the I complete opposite? The the Barney Camp one really got me into cinema. Um, the, the Barney episode with the bear. Um, that's kind of my first memory. I don't think it counts. Not a movie. I don't know if it matches the prompt. Um, I'll say that. Um, <laughs> what did I watch when I was like very, very little? <laughs> the movie called Scamper the Penguin. That was actually a feature length thing. We're, we're going so far back that these aren't even like relevant to anybody who's watching. Yeah, I, I actually, they're just like. Well, like, I have like like there's like a two it's like a two part you know phase in my life. What one was when I was just a passive child watching movies, and then I became a kid and I was watching you know passively watching movies. And then when I was fourteen, uh, we we both had the same sort of experience where we saw There Will Be Blood, and we I actually saw that I, video when you talked about I There Will Be Blood. Yeah, it changed everything. It really did. It just it it ushered in an era of, of watching movies for a different mm -hmm. reason and like a different way. Um, so that, and yeah, so that's probably the first relevant movie to this, uh, to this development. I don't think Barney was in that path, but <laughs> you know, my first, one, like, Hey, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. What about you? What got you into movies? Well, uh, I, I don't think my childhood movie is really the reason why like ignited my passion in movies, but it definitely was Casper. I don't know. I don't know oh, if you yeah. guys. Actually, yes. <laughs> yeah, the Christina Ricci one. So that is the first VHS I ever owned, and I have loved that since probably I was I was just six years old. That is the first like big movie that I've really seen. But in terms of my gateway of film and igniting my passion for movies, it definitely was. Well, there are two. Um, the first one was definitely American Beauty in terms of like fleshed out characters, characters with great arcs, beautiful storytelling. It definitely was American Beauty. But um, when it comes to like mind gymnastics, it was Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive really like opened the doors in what I think cinema is possible of doing. So yeah, Mulholland Drive definitely for me. Yeah. So I'm basically, there. you guys, There Will Be Blood was the reason why you got into the Oscar game, because that was a big contender the year it was released. Yeah. And American yeah. Beauty was also one of the one of the ones that we saw like really early on, like after There Will Be Blood, we were like hunting for other like great movies that we really, really yeah. liked. I, I wouldn't say it got us into the Oscar game, though. Um, that <laughs> got us into movies and then movies got us into Oscars by, you know, just starting to follow what was happening. Um, and then I guess the more we paid attention to it, the more it kind of just snowballed because we just, ba we bounce off of each other. So the more, like, it just kind of, things just kind of snowball for us and become like, you know, they become interests and then they become hobbies and like become obsessions. Well, I think it had to do with it because it's like, you know, well, for you, it's American. Yeah, that media. was, yeah, the gateway, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think the it's... fact that it performed well at the Academy Awards was yeah was exactly. It's somehow. like I don't know. it's like if you know you watch a couple movies that you really really like and you're like oh like these got nominated for awards like I should check out like some of the awards. That movies. is that is exactly my experience with American Beauty because the poster has this big Best Picture winner and I was like 
oh, it won something called Oscar. What is that? So I it definitely snowballed from there, my experience in watching American Beauty. So yeah, that is definitely my gateway film. And do you guys remember the first like Oscar ceremony that you've seen? Yeah, we watched, um, I think we were, we started to get into the Oscars on the, in like the Hurt Locker year. We started to watch, I think mm -hmm. that's when we watched uh, most of the movies. I don't remember if you even watched that ceremony though. Um, yeah, I, I don't ceremony? remember that one. I, I actually remember, was it, it wasn't, was it Argo the next year? No, oh, no, 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 the Argo, yeah, it, was, what was it, that? it was the King's Speech and, and the King's remember, Speech, yeah. I, remember, I think I remember Argo. I remember the first David year Fisher. I was like really into it though. No, you remember David Fincher losing. We were, I don't, you, I think you told me, <laughs> I think you were kind of like, you're telling, telling me, me you weren't happened. into the Tree of Life getting nominated for director. You weren't I, like, into okay, that. I don't know how, I don't know how much, I'm pretty I, sure. I loved the Tree of Life at the time, but I don't know how much it impacted me like that knowing that it got nominated i don't know if i knew what that meant yet i don't know i i just like i'm not sure i really remember yeah I, being into it the year that like argo and lincoln were i guess we out. could say that's the first year of like full investment yeah full full investment we'll steady ramp up so is that the um the first oscar year where you decided that you'll eventually venture out on youtube and do Oscar predictions? Was that part of the plan when you started? Like, what made you get into YouTube? That's one. I, I'm very curious about that one. I I just looked at the market. I you know I analyzed like the market, and I was looking at you know all the charts going up and down, and I just said, there there's there's a market here for this. We could do this on YouTube, and there's a market. No, but the um, <laughs> no, we did, we never had it like in in, in our plans like until um we started making early Oscar predictions and they would get a surprising amount of views. Like if we put out a video in March predicting the Oscars, which is kind of hilarious, like no one, no one does that. Um, and, and that would be like the only video we'd publish on this one channel for years. Like we had probably like, probably like eight YouTube channels with like different shit, but we don't use most of them. So this was one that we just like revisit every year, we post maybe one or two videos and they would get like a decent amount of views. So we just thought it would be fun to do more videos predicting Oscars. And because sometimes we would just be sitting on like, you know, a prediction that we wanted to share, we would just make a video for that. And that just kind of started like how we were making these videos like, oh, we're going to watch, you know, now we're going to watch the trailer for this and, because everyone's saying it's an Oscar contender, you know, are we going to predict that it's getting nominated? And then that's kind of how it happened. And in the early days, a lot, of, a lot of our videos had like, you know, massive dislikes because I think we were, we, we came across- I've seen your early videos actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, so, like we yeah. came across as like really cocky, I think. And we were like learning like, oh, people don't like, like the level of like cockiness that we're like going for. Cause we think this is how we thought it was fun. We thought it was like a little bit like trolly, I guess. Yeah, we were being- But now, like now I don't consider character. myself a troll anymore. Yeah, yeah, and you're living for your name, like the Oscar expert. So you should definitely embrace that. Yeah. Well, that's I, I think that's, that's fine. Full name though. That's, See, like, yeah, it's, that's it's like why. Name. That's why the Oscar expert name is so like, it's so like, like eh, I'm the expert, and like you're not. <laughs> like, and because because but I didn't know like that I should be like a person in the videos. So I was just I had like a persona where I'm like screaming about the Oscar. I was like, like I meant what I said, but it was like. Yeah. I was being like goofy. It was funny. Like I'd be off camera, like laughing at him. Yeah. And then he would be doing like his whole, his whole like rant about like whatever is going to happen in the Oscar race. Um, yeah. So but the, yeah, it was never, it was never a thing that we planned out to do. And um, we just decided to be consistent. It just, it, it's just something that people were, were interested in there. And then we, we were like, Oh, you know, people, if we, if we do this consistently in an award season, we might actually ramp up like a lot. And that, that kind of happened. So. Yeah. I mean, we did notice that, like, there wasn't, you know, really anybody on YouTube who's, like, super duper into the Oscars yeah. and, like, posting about all the Oscar events. So I, I, th I did think that, like, I could, um, you know, tag and thumbnail my way to, like, the top of certain search things. <laughs> like, if someone searches Oscar reactions, like, not, there's not enough people doing it where I, I, might, I might still come up on those videos. And those are where we get like a lot of new subs and everything. But I was right when I said that you guys are a pioneer, right? Like there's I, no one else 
that was doing pretty much YouTube Oscar well, predictions before you guys. I'm not sure. I like to think we're still the um, the only ones doing like the level of like screaming. So Definitely. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's like some people who like now, predictions sometimes. I, you know, but... a lot of people do predictions now and like as a, on a regular basis, and I'm not I'm not personally like aware of how long this has been going on. I don't know if that was like. I don't know if it like triggered anything for other people. Like I just don't know the answer, so I'm, I I won't take credit for it. But if someone wants to do a research paper on it, and then like the analysis, that's that's the, when you know that you already made it. it when like it people matters. are actually doing research papers about you guys. <laughs> Before we dive right into the Oscars post SAG, um, I want to know: Do you have any plans on venturing out? into filmmaking because I've seen your shorts and do you ever plan on making like a full feature length film in the future? Mm, um, I don't plan on it, but I do like really like making um, videos. Like a lot of them are comedy videos, but I did go to film school and I like tried my hand at like, you know, I had the film class where I was like shooting on film in black and white. And so they would just be like an experimental film. Mm -hmm. And then short film at the end of that, um, that was like, you know, had like a, you know, I, I put like money behind it and everything. So I've tried my hand at like serious filmmaking as well. But I think it's just, I think I just want to keep it like a fun thing that I revisit. And um, if I like it so much that I decide I have to make something one day, then maybe, but that doesn't really, um, been the case for me i think i'm too like like if i if i actually try to like d be serious about it and like plan it out i'm i'm too um you know I, I i can't make it happen like some other people can like got it yeah it's a little bit of a struggle so i probably probably not but uh it's i have fun with it so i and i really i mean we both like making comedy videos so i think that's something that i, I want to keep doing and like put out more content for uh, starting like this summer, probably, but yeah. just for fun. Like I have no ambition with it, really. Just, yeah, like, I, have fun. I think like I, I know a lot of YouTubers are like really like like you know they at the end of the day like they want to be like the people to make the films. And I I do like um, I mean I like making the the comedy stuff a lot. Like I like I feel like that feels very creatively fulfilling for me. Like to do like you know to, to find like weird funny thing i've seen your ralph video <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a, that's really fun um and i don't have like a like a like a i don't feel like i have i have something to say for other people that they need to hear like yeah. in a context or like i have like a meaning that i need to give to others so i don't really have like a, a there's not much of me that's like compelled to make anything beyond like you know comedy it's like even in college i felt like oh this is like where you're supposed to like start making like dramatic films and i like tried to like write one and i and i felt so dumb about it that i had to scrap <laughs> it and write something stupid like <laughs> it's just it's just yeah. uh what i what i yeah that's just my yeah yeah that's what i want to do so but, you guys want to like for example um are you are you more leaning on dire directing a film or writing or probably acting in one or probably I, a mix of everything I, 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 I do like uh, acting, but like only in my stuff. Like I've tried to act in other people's stuff. Works if they know who I am and they like know what I do. But, um, you know, I, I think like, I, I am very into YouTube and I always have been. So like, I'm perfectly content, like, you know, putting out videos on online and stuff and like, you know, there are some people who like, if they're writers, like they want to make a novel and they go ahead and make a novel or like, you know, they're filmmakers, so they want to make a full feature length movie. But like, you know, for mm -hmm. me, like I, I would be just as happy if like I had, you know, an audience of people, which I guess I kind of do now that I can guide to like watch any creative work that I want people to see. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm cool being like quick and easy. And I wouldn't really expect that to ever turn into like a career where I'm making like money off of a feature film. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm like cool with putting stuff on like YouTube and it even feels like, you know, kind of creatively fulfilling to do these videos and everything. And you might feel the same way about your channel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it always starts as a passion project. You never really do something for it to be a money generating machine, right? It, it always yeah. starts with a passion, something that brings you fulfillment 
And yeah, it, it, I think that's the wisest move when venturing into a profession. You never, re you never should really think about the money involved. Definitely. Uh, okay, so I've been seeing a lot of Oscar comments in the comments, so we should probably dive right in. And this is going to be a post SAG Awards um, sort of prediction for the upcoming Oscars. And we should probably start with probably my favorite category of the season. It's Best Supporting Actress. So I, I want to know who do you think will win and who do you think should win? And probably a bonus on who do you think should have been there? Well, I think Yu Yu Jung is going to win. Um, I, I think we're clearer than others. And you asked who should win? Who should be nominated, I think. I, yeah. Yeah, okay. should win. And then should have been nominated. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, I think Yu Yu Jung is, is worthy. I also love Maria Bakalova's performance. Um, I think that's worthy. Uh, there's really none in the, that are nominated, actually, that I don't think, that I would be upset with winning. Um, I think, lit yeah, literally none, right? I can't think of any. I think they're all really Yeah, funny. I mean, at this point, with, with Yoon Yoo Jung being the front runner, I'd be upset to see all other people win, because I really want that, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, should have been there. Um, hmm. I don't know. Well, I, I, can't, like, I, I don't know why I can't think of any. I, like, made a, a list of, of, like, my personal nominations, and, like... I think, well, I put Yuri Han on there, but, like, I know that she's not, like, technically supporting or whatever, but, like, I probably would have yeah. double did, like, the two of them in that movie. More um, supporting than... I'd say than she's, like, cool. Yeah. Sure. So what do you think someone said? Oh, JC said in the comments, Dominic Fishback. What do you think of her? She'd be worthy of a nomination. Yeah. Agreed. And it would have been a perfect scenario if Lucky, Daniel, and Dominique all got in. That'd be, that'd be crazy, yeah. I think she'll have her day at some point. Um, yeah, she just made, she just signed on to make a movie. Um, what? With, with her own script, yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Based so on she her gonna play and she's going to be in it. She, she, yeah, she's going to be in it. She may or may not, like, have a greater involvement. Nobody knows yet. Hmm. Um, so that's interesting. So, she, yeah, she's, I think she's fine. She doesn't need her Oscar nomination. She, she's probably going to take off, I think. I have, uh, I'm reading Tony Collette, and as much as I love, I'm thinking of anything. I'm I don't thinking know of anything. things, yeah. Performance. Ellen oh, Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn, yep. There it is. Yeah, my pick actually is Ellen Burstyn. And she wants it. I mean, she's very open about it. Like, it would be a badge of longevity for her career. And it's yeah. kind of sad that she didn't, like, take that record of being the oldest nominee. I was really rooting for it, but... Yeah, yeah, it's too bad it didn't happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind, of, I'm still kind of baffled that, um, you know, she wasn't nominated. Uh, I would, I would have. That's probably my pick. That I think that's it. I don't know. Like, I think my lineup would be sort of close to what's there. I'm trying to think of like the movies that I really liked and like. I got to get out my top list underrated so supporting performances and like I think a lot of the, the performances were in the conversation. What do you think? Was it was that was that your pick, Ellen Burson? Yeah, personally, I really wanted Ellen Burson to, to get in. And um, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, some people probably just didn't care too much about Pieces of a Woman. And I don't think Pieces of a Woman really aged that well. I mean, it was hot when it was first released. And it just kind of died down. The buzz really didn't live up in the next following months that before the Oscars. Yeah. So what about Best Supporting Actor? This is an easy one. Will win and should win. Who do you think? Will and should is Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah. Which is why it's so easy to predict him because everybody knows. That Absolutely. He's I, I'm glad to not have to say, oh, Paul Racy should have been there. I was really worried the whole year I'd have said that. And I don't. So I'm quite happy with the race. Paul Racy is definitely kind of like the Laurie Metcalf where everyone in the critics loved Laurie Metcalf. And then all of a sudden, um... Alice and Jenny just took over once the major Guild Awards happened. So, yeah, it's definitely the same setting as that. And I actually read, uh, Cole, about your tweet earlier about having this, the concept of splitting votes. What do yeah. you think about that? Like, a lot of people still think that Lakeith and Daniel could possibly split the votes. Well, I think, I mean... I think my, my tweet, which was like, I don't know if vote splitting makes sense because you're assuming you know who people's second choice is and also, like, isn't everybody exactly. everybody? And it's just a race to number one votes, really. Um, but, I mean, that might apply if uh, somebody 
could, you know, I could see somebody being set on voting for a certain film. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the vote splitting is going to impact Daniel Kaluuya enough. I mean, we've seen a lot of instances of people winning, supporting mm -hmm. with, uh, while, while the, their co-stars, you know, also not Sam Rockwell. Their, Sam Rockwell. Um, I think that happens enough that, like, it hasn't proved to be a problem. And Lakeith Stanfield's name has barely even been in the conversation up to this point. So mm -hmm. I think Kaluuya, like, people are like, they know he's winning. They, you know, they're voting for him knowing that they're just contributing to that. And, yeah, I don't know. I think he's, he could also take such a, a big lead that even if Lakeith does, like, split a little bit, it's, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I think the concept of vote splitting was just created. Um, I think it's just an unproven theory created by studio heads way back, probably in the 50s, when Betty Davis was head to head with Ann Baxter for All About Eve. And when neither of them won and it went to Judy Holiday, I think like the concept of split voting was created. But it never really was proven because who knows exactly uh, yeah. the second choices of the voters. And I think that was just a concept created so that um, two actors of the same movie, particularly in the lead category, won't go head to head. So, but it was never really proven. And like you said, we see it time and time again from Melissa Leo, um, The Fighter, and Sam Rockwell in Three Billboards. And it, it's, I don't think it's a thing, honestly. Yeah, I mean, you could you could see it like theoretically it could happen, but the two that are competing in a movie would have to be like equally as good, or, or I mean, people would yeah. have to see performances as being like, I don't know, yeah, equally uh, as good, and that, you know, usually there's somebody who stands out as, and and whose career makes a little bit more sense to give them an Oscar rather than, you know, people being absolutely like fifty fifty or even like seventy thirty between two people in the same category. Um, mm -hmm. But it definitely appears like studios are are weary of the concept of vote splitting and they do act like it is a thing. Um, mm -hmm. because they, put their, they never want to put their double leads in the same category. Um, even Judas probably didn't intend to do that. Mm -hmm. Someone uh -huh. asked in the comments, uh, do you think Alan Kim or David Strathairn were snubbed in the Best Supporting Actor category? No, I don't think that like either of them needed a nomination, like an Oscar nomination. Yeah. Um, you know, I know a lot of people would have been happy about it, but I don't think it was, I don't think they needed it. Like, everybody... And Alan Kim already got his moment at a Critics' Choice, I think. Like, that was the peak. Yeah, that was when people were like, I think we're going to give... <laughs> more nominations so we can get more exactly <laughs> like i don't know like like you know we can i'd be fine like waiting until he gives like another one i don't know i don't know and uh david strathairn is i mean he's great in no my land but it's like it's sort of small and i don't know if it, it i would like i wouldn't like put him on my ballot for for voting for that but i'm not gonna they're both good performances. i'm not gonna take anybody out of that category for for someone else i think it, they did a really good job with the lineup yeah it is a solid lineup so do you, uh, you think um, Sasha Baron Cohen is the Chicago actor who oh, should have been nominated? I, I would have taken him out for, like, somebody else in that movie, probably. Like Mark Rylance. Mm -hmm. and yeah, maybe... Same. Mark Rylance is also my pick for should have been there. Yeah. I think I would have taken out... You know, honestly, like, in my opinion, I, w I, I think it's nice that Baron Cohen gets recognized for dramatic work. So it's not like mm -hmm. I necessarily change that because I like it for him but uh I I wouldn't put him in like my top five for supporting performances um agreed so, you know I might actually go with something like Bill Murray and on the rocks yeah that's probably the one that I think is in my opinion the weakest it turned out to be a great category so we are going to proceed with lead actress so what are your thoughts about lead actress who's gonna win well, probably uh, we should start with who who you want to win. That I think that would be easier. Who you want to win? Who I want to win? Actress. Yeah. Uh, I would probably vote for Frances McDormand in the category. Mm -hmm. uh, I think her performance was just like, it was just so like nobody else could have done this the way that you did it. And I think that, why, you know, every time you watch Land, you like get something new out of her performance. And I just think it's like, really like a unique piece of acting and it's it's you know very masterful oh my 
Um, and that's probably who I would go for. But as far as the other nominees, like, I think any of them, you know, to an extent be like worthy of the award. Like, I think that's also why it's just so tough is because everybody's really good. I mean, yeah, I, my personal pick would be Frances McDormand, but the, I absolutely would get behind like Viola Davis winning a, a lead actress Oscar. And I also think she's great in the movie. Uh, you know, yeah. if only she had just that much more of like a character or screen time in the movie, you know, she's really great in that movie. And when she is on screen, it's like electrifying. So I could definitely get behind a Viola Davis win. Um, I, yeah. You know, I mean, Viola well, Davis really catapulted after her SAG win. Yeah. Honestly, I think I think those two would be like my favorites to win. I have nothing against Carrie Mulligan, but I, it, it didn't stand out as like the best performance of the year to me. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think honestly, either either of them would be great. So what do you, you think will win, given the craziness, the statistics? Yeah. I do not have an answer to that. Like, um, <laughs> you know, I like someone asked me that a few days ago and I said Francis McDormand which was really weird I don't know what how that came out like I don't know how that <laughs> came but like it changes every day um and mm. you know, now I kind of think Viola Davis like in this moment I think Viola Davis uh mm. but like I don't know what I'll think tomorrow like I it just it's so it does it just there's no answer for me I mean here's the other thing it's like I feel like at this rate there's no way it's not going to be a surprise. I <laughs> so, agree. Like, if, you know, keep her, keep her it's like, if you're going to predict, you know, whatever happens to be number one on Gold Derby at time, it's probably going to be Carrie Mulligan or Viola Davis. It's like, you really think it's going to be that easy? Like, I don't know. I, I think, I feel like in a lot of ways, you could say it's foolish to continue to predict Carrie Mulligan because she lost so many awards that people thought would catapult her as the front runner. And so you're really with her and but something tells me that like she could still take it and something tells me that in the hypothetical scenario where she was nominated at BAFTA she might have won that and if that happened if that happened I think people would be saying that she's winning Viola Davis could definitely win I'm like between those two for for my pick and uh she's you know she's having I feel like after the SAG win people are like oh shit like we can get behind this like we can easily get behind a, a Davis win and I could get behind it too, for sure. Like she's she's really amazing in that movie, exactly. and be happy to give her a second Oscar. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of races where the awards went to like different people, like they didn't necessarily just go with the SAG, which is what yeah. a lot of people will end up actually because they're the most predictable one, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and they have overlap in the Academy, so it's it's tough to say. It's like nobody has a great case for them in a way mm -hmm. it, as far as like precursors go. And even McDormand, I guess feeling it from just the passion behind the film. Someone asked in the comments, what do you think of Vanessa Kirby winning? Do you think she has a shot? Mm, I mean, if she let's, I mean, let's say she wins BAFTA, uh, which is possible. It's still like, I, I, I still would just say probably not like, she hasn't really won many awards at all, if any, throughout the whole yeah. award season. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, she's kind of viewed as like a fourth or a fifth spot. It'd be shocking to see her win, especially since her movie didn't even have enough ment momentum to get like Ellen Burstyn in there. Agreed. And it's the sole nomination of the movie. Yeah. Which is also not working too well in Andrew Day's favor. Mm -hmm. Usually you win off a sole nomination or like just that in makeup or something light. Because mm -hmm. you're like, you know, Meryl Streep and the Iron Lady or, Ju Ju you know, um, Renee Zellweger and Judy or Julianne Moore and Still Alice, like someone really, really big or like Jeff Bridges and Crazy. Yeah, like, like, a, like a veteran. Or yeah. someone like more, uh, Julianne Moore who had that overdue factor, overdue right. narrative. And Andre Day doesn't have that technically. Or Kirby really. So that's that's why I wouldn't really predict those two. But in this year, I'm not going to say any of them couldn't happen. Yeah. I mean, also, you sh you could probably make the argument that the Bastards just don't re you really matter. Like, they shouldn't influence your predictions at all since nobody mm -hmm. else. They're like, you know, if if the Bastards are going to... I don't think the Bastards are going to shake it up too much. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think they have any room to. 
just because. Agreed. And, and there is actually a possibility that either Kirby or McDormand is winning at the BAFTAs. That is a yeah. possibility. I agree because it's so it's so up in the air that they could just pick anybody. We we don't need to give it to anybody like in particular. So I'm just gonna vote for like this person. I really like their performance in it. You know, it could it could it could be like it could be pretty nuts. We have no idea. Do you have a should have been there for a lead actress, or are you are you happy with the lineup? I'm happy with the lineup, but I could definitely like pull something out that you know, Julie Julie Garner and the assistant. Yeah. I think I, I would have I was like really, really impressed with her performance in that movie. I, I would also yeah. say like Aubrey Plaza in Black Bear. Um yeah. I thought Aubrey that was Plaza was amazing. She was excellent in Black Bear. I really loved that performance. Yeah. There are a lot as of As well as Sydney Flanagan. Sydney Flanagan actually is my personal pick and should have been there. I, I really love her in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, and I it's I, quite controversial, the movie, that is why it probably not uh, resonated. It didn't resonate to many voters, and yeah, that really hurt the, the film's chances. Even at screenplay, it didn't even get the WGA nomination. So yeah, it's just, it's tough to be a small slow burn indie film, especially when you're you know your About subject abortion. matter matter is controversial. At the same time, maybe that Agreed. puts the hype up a little bit because you know voters will go for something that has like a strong political message, but it's. Mm -hmm. It's not like done in the way in the way that they like their political messages to be delivered across. Oh, Kovat is Ida true. Like I, I, I'm gonna see that, and I feel like I might end up thinking she was overdue as well. Yeah, we haven't seen seen that yet. Probably this weekend we'll watch it. What do you think of Amy Adams in Hillbilly Elegy? She was good. Like I, I you know, she was. Yeah, I don't know. I liked. Her. I wouldn't have. I don't Solid. think that she needed to be nominated because I, I get that it's like you know. Just be in the sort of uh, it's it's very Oscar like screaming and and, and drugs. Um, but I yeah I liked her <laughs> and and I I defend Hillbilly Elegy a little more than others. Well, like yeah, I thought she was like Oscar. Like I mean, you know, if she if this was a year an alternative universe where Hillbilly Elegy is 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 like tolerated by critics and she got nominated, yeah. like it wouldn't bother me really at all. Um, but it doesn't mean that I, it would be like my top choice. It probably would not be my top choice. Probably wouldn't be on my personal ballot, but. Well, uh, my personal choice on who should win, um, I'll probably go with Carrie Mulligan only because I think it'll be a refreshing win um, when we think of someone like uh, Viola Davis for Ma Rainey or Andrew Day for Billie Holiday. I feel like it's gonna be a bio win all over again. So for someone to win in a genre film that is very polarizing, very, um, very unexpected, because it already happened to Joaquin Phoenix. So I think um, we need to see something like that happen in the lead actress category. But I think who will win? I, I honestly don't know. But like, like you said, it changes every day. But for now, I'm probably I'll probably go with Viola Davis. The mm. other day I did something like this with a friend and I said Andrew Day and right now I'm saying Viola Davis. Like it really changes every day. Um, I'm still convinced that uh, the Golden Globe win for Andrew Day kind of meant something. Um, mm. Like because only because of the statistics like every best actress winner at the Globes be it musical or comedy or drama always end up winning the Oscar and it has always been like that for probably two decades now. So I, I don't think that is something that we can really disregard. But at the same time, a lot of factors are working against, you know, uh, uh, Andrew Day. So it could be Viola Davis. Could it be Karen Mulligan. I don't know. It's it's so confusing. Yeah, that that is like a that is a very strong trend. But I will say that I mm -hmm. I I factor that in to to what I you know think is going to win. Um, you know, not because it's irrelevant, but like just because it's I yeah, I I I think that's more of like, you know, things usually go a certain way, they like trying a certain way, but like clearly it's so clear that this year that didn't happen. You know, she wasn't even nominated mm -hmm. anywhere else except for the Oscars. Um mm -hmm. and the critics. And she hasn't, you know, yeah. So to me, I wouldn't factor in. I think this is just gonna be the year to end that, you know? And that always happens. That, always that is possible. Year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's. I think that's the case. Yeah, um, I think. I, I, I'm not. I don't think it's impossible for you to win. But yeah, I. I, I, pro I will not be predicting her at the end of the day because. Mm -hmm.
I just I think it's less likely than someone like Viola Davis, but yeah. it's not impossible. Yeah, because I mean the Golden Globes, they're they're right a lot because they have two categories, and also because they um I mean, they're they're right because they go with people who are like expected and like just would no would like e easy to pick to win. Yeah, they they, they just weren't normal. It, it's like they weren't very normal this year, and so it's like. Usually they're normal, and that's why yeah. they, right. They never usually think outside of the box, and they, the the wins at the, at the Globes usually are pretty safe. And, yeah. yeah, I agree that it's not normal this year. So they, that is a factor that probably isn't going for Andrew Day, yeah. It's also hard to tell what is normal because other, other awards <laughs> are affirming each other in a way, but in terms mm -hmm. of affirming the, them with nominees, Andrew Day is the only one that doesn't really have that because the others were nominated basically everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's worth pointing out that none of, the nom none of the comedy best actresses this year were really viable contenders for the Oscar. It was only, it came down to only one category where they could predict mm -hmm. the which makes it automatically, I think, less, right? And then... Mm -hmm. You know, if the Golden Globes didn't have two actress categories, we probably wouldn't see this trend go on so long. It's definitely interesting to think about, though. It's a, that's a really strong trend. Um, definitely can't deny that. I mean, another trend is, like, that the best actor in, 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 I think, the whole decade since Jeff Bridges and Crazy Heart has not gone to an actor whose film wasn't nominated in the Best Picture category. And that's a strong exactly. trend. But yeah. it mm -hmm. make me say that Bozeman can't win or won't win. Um, because I think it's weird that Ma Rahini got snubbed in the first place. And there's just, you know, the circumstances make it so that, like, you know, you, you, would, you wouldn't count it out because of that. I think that will also break that trend. So we have two interesting trends to break in the lead acting categories. Who is your personal pick for a lead actor? Uh, I'd pick Anthony Hopkins, I think. That I mean, that Same. performance, like, ever, I thought I was, I was just like, I don't see acting better than that. Like, that's one of the best acting performances I've ever seen. And even for someone like Anthony Hopkins, I, I can maybe say that's his career yeah. best, which is like nuts. Uh, yeah, that's who I'd pick. Yeah, I would pick, I, I would, I would say should win. Um, I mean, I, I don't like saying should win because I wouldn't like snatch the award out of someone else's hand. <laughs> well, but, like, makes sense. But, Personal pick. Yeah, yeah. Anthony Hopkins, definitely. Mm -hmm. Father. So, how could I not? Um, and then sh Will win. Um, I think Chadwick Boseman is still in the lead, but Hopkins could could nip at his heels. So, we'll see tomorrow at the BAFTAs if that happens. doesn't happen. There's like no route, I think, for, for anybody but Chadwick winning. Yeah. Yeah, my Will win too is Chadwick Boseman. I mean, um, Unless something happens at the BAFTAs, definitely his winning all the way. Um, what about should have been there? Do you have hmm. someone in mind oh, that well, I, you think? I, we all we all have oh, yeah. the same person in mind. We all know Delroy Lindo. I agree. Was, like, yeah. Disgustingly who, snubbed. Who are you going to take out if you want uh, Delroy Lindo to get in? Gary Oldman. Yeah, like everybody else. Like I would have taken out Gary Oldman. I, would, I mean, I'd have to think about other people. There's, there's a chance that, like, some movie I saw, I, I could, I don't know. I have to look through to see if there's another movie that I would have nominated in Best Actor. I, I'm not sure there is. I'm not sure there is. What about Mads Mikkelsen? Oh, that's true, yeah. Um, yeah, I, w I would love Mads Mikkelsen to get a lead actor nomination for something. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was worthy in the movie. And then the, the, the question there would be, you know, if I had my perfect category, would I have taken out him for Steven Yeun? Um, it's a hard, it's a hard one. Maybe, yeah. though, maybe personally, like, not that I don't love that Steven Yeun got a nomination, though. I, I'm, I'm really happy for him and his career, mm -hmm. because uh, I just want, I want him to get more work. So like, I can't, I can't replace him for that. But I do think, you know, maybe Mads Mikkelsen's performance overall in the movie was stronger. Um, mm -hmm. it just be like a role thing. It's not he was I think he was perfect with what he was given. Um, mm -hmm. but, I don't know. Mads Mikkelsen was maybe a, just like a stronger lead performance for me, so yeah, I, yeah I agree. Yeah, absolutely, get behind. I need. We need to keep Riz Ahmed in. 
we need to keep Bozeman in. We need to keep Hopkins in the category no matter what. Oh, I have a um, new uh, I have a new actress overdue person I just thought of, and it's Morphin Clark and Saint Maud. I would I would have nominated her. Oh yeah, but that's kind of this that's kind of this it year. It's not this year. I definitely love Saint Maud too. But I is it is it eligible at the Oscars I think it, before like the the theaters. voting process happened? I think it came out in theaters a year ago, and so it was like oh. gear. Of last it year definitely release. didn't campaign, though. but it but it got cut off by the pandemic, like right when it released. I remember I was like watching um, the trailer for the Lodge, and or I was I was watching previews before the Lodge in theaters, and I was like, I'm going to see that in a month, and it took a year to see it, but I think it did actually get a little bit of a release. I want to have my list in front of me because I did write down like some performances that I think, like you know, might be worthy, um, but yeah, I, I would be happy with the lineup and probably would have taken out Gary Oldman for Delroy Lindo. And that would be like, probably, that'd be such an ideal lineup. And it's not like I hate Gary Oldman. I just, I don't I mean, know. Passionate I mean, I, I love Mank. And Mank is one of my favorite films of last year. But I I really didn't buy Gary Oldman as Herman Mankiewicz. Like, there's something about his performance that I really wasn't convinced that he was from that era. I, I almost feel like it was a miscast as Herman Mankiewicz. But... Yeah, I just see Gary Oldman re being a great actor, but I didn't really see him as Erman Mankiewicz. Plus, I think Amanda Seyfried really upstaged him in a lot of their scenes. And yeah, yeah I don't think Gary Oldman particularly deserved the, per the nomination, personally. One thing that I've been like thinking about Gary Oldman is like, he's very goofy in like everything he does. And I feel like at some point, like, when are we going to see a not goofy Gary Oldman performance? And like, <laughs> is the goofiness for him like a little bit of like a, a crutch, like like as a performer? And like, should he have leaned off of it in Mank or or maybe something in the future? Like, even in the Woman in the Window trailer, like he comes in and he's like, "We're not going to do and, and it's I like, agree. "Oh, you." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay, so we've dabbled on the acting categories. Probably let's just touch uh, quickly on the directing and picture. So let's start with director. This is an easy one, but let's just say it for the sake of it. Will win and should win. Chloe Zhao on three. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Win. Someone like, actually, I saw a comment um, earlier. Someone asked if there's someone who could potentially pull an upset in the director category. Who would it be? <laughs> so let's say that No My Land wasn't just wasn't a movie this year. Okay, like didn't happen at all. Ooh, right? Yeah. What the hell wins director? What the hell? Well, I guess. Do you think it's, it's David Fincher's year if No Mad Land didn't happen? Oh, that's true. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might. It might, it might be. be but at the same time, I don't think Mank is a number two for picture. I think you could argue that Mank is one of the least likely to win because... Totally. 100%. Yes, all, yeah. But, but, but if this was a really weird year, okay? Because Chloe Zhao, people think... People are like, thank God No My Line came out this year because we wouldn't know who to pick for director. We have to pick her. So, like, if it was that weird, then maybe Fincher would win for Mank and Mank wouldn't win Best Picture. And you wouldn't say that, like, because other Emerald than that, Fennel is a shot or, like, something I don't, like that. I don't that. think... She, I mean... She wouldn't have that strong of a shot for a director, I think. Or, or it would be just like the actress category this year. It would be between, like, Fennell and Chung and, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. It, it, you know, again, I guess if it's not Fincher, that, yeah, no, it would be between Fincher and um, uh, I guess Sorkin would have, could have been nominated in that. I, I don't know. I don't know if you want to want. It's kind of a crazy question. If you take Chloe Zhao out of the picture, this award season becomes very dry and strange. Well, the award season has already shaped the way it is because we've taken other things out of the picture. So mm -hmm. you can keep doing that like in to infinity and then you'll end up with like Bad Boys 2 winning Best Picture. But uh, yeah, I mean, Chloe Zhao like deserves very much to be winning. And 100%. I think everybody like gets that and it's so obvious and it's, it's gonna be great. Um, it's going to be a great win. Yeah. And it's going to be a very easy, predictable win. Maybe the most predictable award of the night. Yeah, it's, it definitely is one of the true locks. Like, there's, you can't argue about it. Like, yep. Chloe Zhao is going to win. Yep. Who do you think uh, should have been there? Do you have any personal choices on you think, like, 
should have been mm -hmm. there instead for Vinterberg probably. This this is this is um this is interesting. A, a lot of my I, like I don't have that I I have, I have less disagreements over like who should be placed in the acting categories with the Oscars versus picture because I think like my top five movies of this year were all nominated mm -hmm. for anything. So like yeah, mm -hmm. I would put it. I guess you know if we're just playing favorites like. I, Charlie Kaufman from Thinking of Any Things or like yeah. even like Heidi Ewing for I Carry You With Me like I love that movie what was my number two yeah it's just like putting in your favorites but um no there was oh, one that movie was that I just thought this year um what's my number four <laughs> forgetting my top ten someone oh. mentioned oh Jay-Z mentioned Shaka King what do you think about him Shaka uh, yeah. King Shaka, Shaka King and Florian Zeller I think would have been really yeah. good yeah choices. I would yeah both of them would have been like really deserving too yeah yeah, I'd be very happy if they got nominated, either of them. What about, um, do you think Darius Smarter had a shot at all in getting nominated? Oh, yeah, someone mentioned Darius Smarter. Yeah, he... Sound of metal. Oh, oh, someone's saying Rose Glass. I, I agree, I agree. St. Maude is Rose so... Glass, so well yeah, definitely. Um, Darius Smarter, I thought if there was going to be anyone who would take out Sorkin, I thought it, it might have been him. And it same. was... You know, same. Someone did take out. Someone. Not in a million years, I would have thought it, it's going to be Vinterberg. I thought it was Darius Martyr. I think Dark it, Horse. He could have gotten it. Um, and I think he probably got like a fair amount of votes. Like mm -hmm. he got nominations. Like there were critic circles who were nominating him for director and stuff. And um, I wouldn't have been opposed to seeing that either. Like I think that was a really impressive debut. And like all mm -hmm. the, I don't know, that was like a really well made film. So I would not have been upset. I would have been very happy if he got nominated. Okay. So. We are at the last stretch of our predictions. Picture, this is a tricky one. Who do you think will win? Is it Nomadland all the way? Or is there a potential upset given that Trial just won SAG? What do you think? Nomadland all the way, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that it, it's, it's Nomadland and that's like clearly going to be something I'm predicting. And I think it's even maybe even more likely to win the BAFTA than the Oscar. Um, but at this point, you know, it's dangerous to say nothing else could upset. Like, that is what I said when Nomadland was sweeping. When I was, like, was ready sweeping? to... I mean, sorry, when, when La La Land was sweeping. Yeah. Uh, both Land movies. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, once, once, once Director happened for La La Land, I was like, okay, good night. Like, everybody, like, we're done. Goodbye. Nothing else is happening. And then Moonlight won. <laughs> like... I guess, you know, to entertain what could possibly win, I really don't think anything else will. But if something were to win, it could be Minari Promising Young Woman or Trial of Chicago 7. Like, I think they, they yeah. all maybe happen. There's a sliver, sliver of hope for each of them. But really, it's not significant for, enough for me to, to predict them. I'd give Chicago 7 the second place because it's mm -hmm. just like, it's just that movie that I saw and went like, that really feels like a Best Picture winner. Like, it really tried to feel like a Best Picture winner. And the Oscars... Yes. And it really campaigned hard, you yeah. know, for, for the Best Picture. Probably still that. It hits a certain audience uh, like that. Like, you know, my parents, uh, <laughs> yeah. like, they got rid of the nominees that they saw. They didn't see Nomad Land, but I also don't know if they like Nomad Land. Um, Agreed. And so I think that, yeah... Trial would be maybe second because it like if it upsets in screenplay, I'm going to be nervous, but I'd still be confident mm -hmm. as my land is taking like screenplay or director. If no my lens wins, loses screenplay, and trial wins screenplay, I'll be nervous. Yeah. I would I, I agree. I would be nervous also. Um so if that happens, uh watch out. But until it happens everything's probably fine and also editing for chicago seven i think the sag the, like the fact that it lost wga it's not really enough momentum it doesn't have mm -hmm. enough it doesn't have like as much momentum as other films like even moonlight had a golden globe win i guess by by process of not being against la la land but it also was the front runner for a screenplay award um it also lost sag i don't know i guess moonlight had just as just as little going for it yeah, so Moonlight one. didn't have that much. It had a screenplay, though. Yeah, it had, so a, screenplay it had a screenplay win. It had a supporting win. actor win. And it had all the right, the nominations in the right places. Trials not yeah, even and, locked. And I mean, Moonlight did 
up did win the best drama for Golden Globe. So I don't think it was really totally um out of the dark was, when it won best picture. Like it it had a little something. Like it really wasn't like out of nowhere. Yeah, the I problem feel like. it didn't compete with La La Land in in the Globes, but yeah, I so mean I, the Golden, I agree, yeah. That it won. The Golden Globe mm -hmm. for drama is um yeah, which is strange. Like, strange that it won at the end of the day, it really is. But yeah, I and think it's like Parasite didn't have like anything. Let's just probably wrap this up. Um, we've touched on the major categories. We did agree on a lot of things in the major categories. Oh, I just want to dabble uh, very quickly on the original screenplay. Just very quick. Is it Promising Young Woman or Chicago 7? I predict Promising Young Woman, but yep. Trial of Chicago 7 does not have as much going for it, except for Golden Globe win, which seemed mm -hmm. too obvious to take that seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say it's impossible that that wins, but Promising Young Woman, I think, is, is going to be everybody's predicted win. I won't keep you guys any longer, um, but listen, I just want to say thank you so much for dropping by. I know it's really early in your end, and I really appreciate you coming in. And very um, yeah, and I already see a timer because IG Live only lasts for an hour. And I think we did this in exactly in an hour. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much. And um, you should probably uh, invite everyone. I think a lot of people here are also from the Philippines. And probably invite them to subscribe to your channel. And I will upload this on YouTube anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, come come subscribe to the Oscar expert and thanks so much for having us. And if you yeah, are, and if you are not subscribed to Playbook, you gotta get on that as well. Even though this is thanks. on his <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been wild and we've finally made it happen. Just to yeah. preface this for everyone in the comments, um we we're supposed to do this probably in twenty nineteen, but I'm glad that didn't happen because that was quite a predictable year. I'm I'm sure we're just gonna say Brad Pitt, Laura Dern. Zellweger yeah. and Phoenix. So this is a juicier year to talk about this. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. It's good. All good right. Time. Thanks guys and everyone who tuned in. Bye.